So, you're searching for the perfect spaceship in Starfield that not only looks good, but also deals with any situation. It has to be deadly, destroy everything in its path, while the build shouldn't be too big or complicated. It must also have all the essentials inside, from crafting and upgrading your gear to plenty of storage. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Foriam, and yep, you've come to the right place. As in the past couple days, I've spent easily 30 hours to perfect my 04 Vengeance build. A deadly spaceship with everything you need. Massive cargo space, all the tools for the space combat, including insane boarding power, the right amount of haps, and of course the looks. Something you want to fly to distant planets and park in your outpost. Today, I'm gonna show you how to build this spaceship suited for any adventures ahead, so let's get right to it. Before we get started, it would mean a lot to me if you can take one second of your time and hit that like button, as I literally spent dozens of hours working on this build to perfect it, and many credits were lost during the process. Be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments down below about it. But yeah, let's start off with a little spaceship tour, as this is my outpost right now, ladies and gentlemen. I don't settle on the ground. It looks pretty small at first. Trust me, it has everything you need inside. All the essential haps, plenty of cargo space and i'm not talking about one or two thousand but over five to six k which is like three times the amount many people have with similar builds so let's have a look inside so this is where you enter the spaceship via the landing bay very central in the ship as you will have instant access to the cockpit and this one is also separated with a little armory two by one so that basically means if you enter the spaceship via this hatch you can instantly pick up any weapon or armor you store in this area so i think it's a nice place to show off your gear you could always switch this one with another hat, like the Captain's Quarters, while I really like to have an armory inside for all the extra storage. Anyways, the next room in line is our cockpit. A Strout Eklund cockpit, which in my opinion is one of the better looking ones, but also extremely simple and efficient storage wise because you can find your cargo hold right here while on the other side you have your captain's locker so you don't have to go through different smaller rooms on the side to store all your goodies everything will be in one place and the nice thing is you will also have plenty of room right here for your companions so an awesome cockpit anyways let's turn around and get to the core of our ship right here with a little staircase this is one which you will most likely never use it's only for boarding purposes so then you're going to use this little one by one area as our docking bridge is positioned on the bottom of the spaceship which we're going to get to in the building but if you want to get up quickly just use your jetpack as then you don't have to use the staircase you will most likely never use this area while it's important to connect with the other haps which we have in this very small yet efficient build as in this site you have a little research computer but also a pharmaceutical lab which you can find on this site what i really like about this place is that it even comes with a little window so you will never have that claustrophobic feel and you can also look at your big boy guns on both sides since this is a symmetrical ship, we will have a window right here as well, but also all the workbenches you're going to need for weapon and armor customization. So first we have our industrial workbench, the spacesuit workbench, and also the weapon workbench, which Sarah appears to be using right now. While it's a fairly small spaceship, the space distribution is as efficient as possible. We've got the most important haps you need for any type of adventure, quick access to the cockpit and both exits. So this is how we dock on space stations or other spaceships while that's the entrance we like to have. I see many people place those docks in the back while they take a lot of space and it will literally take forever to get to the front of your spaceship or the cockpit itself. <laughs> this guy but yeah let's continue to building the ship yourself which also is quite simple as it's not that big i quickly want to say that every spaceship in starfield comes with different parts some of them require you to have a higher spacesuit design level while others require higher piloting i already made a video on how you can level up your piloting skill to the maximum in no time which you can find in the top right of the screen while the one for starship design will come very soon as well you don't necessarily need the exact same parts for this spaceship, while I do recommend you to use the ones with the highest stats possible. For reference, I am level 38 and also use most of the parts from this level. 
so this is what the 04 Avengers looks like when disassembled. Might look a little bit overwhelming at first, but trust me, it's super simple to build. It has a small yet super efficient layout. So um, the only things I left untouched right here are the landing gear. I work with EQ Lander 11 landing gear of Strout Eklund. You can always flip these to make them look nice. I've got some starboards and ports on both sides right here, while I also have one in the center. And in front, we also have an NG6 landing bay from Nova Galactic, which you cannot pick up everywhere, but thank God we are currently in New Atlantis where it's actually possible. We have these big guys, which are extremely inefficient, while the NG6 actually allows you to enter your spaceship via the bottom. So you just climb the ladder and get to the next floor. In the middle, we also have a 100 dp slim docker faced towards the bottom. You can always flip this one and place it on top if you like, but I prefer this layout. Next thing you're going to do is pick up some strout companion ways one by one. You're just going to place them right in the middle above that docker. That's already it. Then we're going to pick up our strout armory or a captain's quarters, whatever you want to have, place it in front, as well as a Viking CP 100 cockpit, also from Stroud Eklund. Now we only have two more haps left, the science and workshop hap. So the workshop will be placed right here and the science will be placed right there. So there you have it. All the haps are in place. This is the layout of the spaceship to begin with. Next up, we're going to throw in some cargo space. I like to go with the Galleon S203, which has a 1200 cargo. And I think this one also looks really good next to the landing gear, which we use for this spaceship. So we're going to do that on both sides. There we go. That's already it for most of the cargo. We're going to place two more Galleon S204 on top right here. Important note, if you don't care about cargo space or if you have mods to take care of that, you can get rid of these entirely, which will crank up your jump range to 21 light years and mobility to the maximum. For this build though, I want to have efficiency all around, so we're just gonna keep them in place. I think they also look pretty good in general, but next step, what we're gonna do is take these Strout Eklund engine bracers A, and we're gonna place them on both sides of the cargo. So this is where we're gonna attach the wings of the spaceship itself. I also add Nova 1030 engines right here, which I think are amazing looking ones. They're gonna be perfect for this build. They blend in so nicely with the Strout caps. So Strat cap A, four bots. We're gonna place another one right here. So that's already the base layout of the spaceship. Right now, I also want to add these landing gears, NG15. We have even better ones at higher levels, but uh, these do the job. But now you see, we still have a little gap in the center and we're gonna fill that in as efficient as possible as well. This is where the Fuser DC402 comes in, which we're gonna put right there. Then we're gonna take a Damus Hull A, place it in front, Aurora 13G grav drive with 33 thrust, and to finish up the front, the Nova Cowling 2LTF. Nova Cowling 2LSF. You want to place that one right there, right in front of the workshop hab. We're going to place another one in front of the science lab. And look at that, we are almost done already. So the next thing you want to do is turn around your spaceship as we've got some ballast shielded cargo right here, which we're going to place on both sides of the wings. And then we also have our helium three tanks. I think these are amazing. Trust me, guys, if you have two of these fellas, you can fill up this space beautifully. Alternatively, you could place one of these big boys in the center, while 500 fuel is gonna be perfect to make any jump in the game. I tested this earlier, and as you can see right here, a jump from Alpha Centauri all the way to Archimedes will give you just enough fuel to make that happen. The combination of these together is also less than the mass for one of those bigger tanks and reducing that mass to a minimum will make your spaceship fly so much better. We also have an Assurance SG-1800 shield, which we're gonna place right on top of the reactor and two of these portholes, which I place right here so we can see a little bit of daylight every time when we land on a planet. Then right below the Nova cowling, you wanna place some strout caps on both sides right here. So the ship looks a little bit more streamlined. I think it works very well. While on the top right now, we're also gonna add those strout caps 
at the very same position because these are gonna give our engines the feel that they are really part of that ship with these Strout engine mounts. So on the side, we use these Nova 1030 engines as you can attach different things to them make it look very nice while in the center we want to add some supernovas 2000s as these give you more maneuvering thrust so the mobility of your spaceship is going to be better as well i also have this nova cowling in the center so you can tell that i've used a lot of nova parts and on top of that i also have a scan jammer multi-frequency which increases your chance of evasion during a ship scan by 50% if you're using shielded cargo and carrying contraband. Definitely something I recommend you to pick up. I got mine from the Red Mile ship technician, but that is basically it for the build. The final thing we need are the weapons. And to make it super simple, I basically attached every single one of them on these weapon mounts. Also a Nova building piece, but um, as missile launchers, I use the Atlatl 280B, while you can definitely find better if you have a higher level. The Atlatl missile launchers are amazing to destroy enemy spaceships, while of course you first want to deal with their shield, for which I think an all-round alpha beam is gonna be awesome, as they have high hull and shield damage, while disabling enemy spaceships in general, I think is something many people underestimate, for which I have two Fulminator 8000s. Taking out enemy spaceships with high damage is very satisfying and something you can do without a problem with this spaceship. However, disabling them, rendering them useless is so much better as then you can easily board the ship, take it for your own. If you want, you could replace all the lethal weaponry on this spaceship with auto turrets, which would make space combat a little bit easier. Personally though, I think firing me lasers and shooting missiles manually, button bash and destroy enemy spaceships on demand is so much more satisfying. Most of the times the manual weapons will deal more instant damage as well, which results in those instant explosions in some encounters. If you distribute your spaceship's energy accordingly, you will have a perfect balance between either destroying enemy spaceships in no time with a combination of the alpha beam and missile launcher, or you could go for the boarding approach where you will exclusively use the suppressors as those fellas two on both sides will take out any ship part in no time. Render it useless entirely so you can board the ship, take out all the crew, hoard contraband and even steal it for your own. While I personally think after you've built this specific spaceship, you will never need another one as this one just works so well in any situation. This is what the spaceship looks like from the rear while this is what it looks like in the front. Again, if you want to sacrifice some cargo space for higher maneuverability, just get rid of these two galleons right here. Replace them with HAPs. This already increases your mobility to 66, jump range to 25. Or you could also get rid of these Galleon S203s in the bottom to crank this up all the way to 128 light years. Again, this build is mod proof, so you don't need to install mods to have the best spaceship possible. This will give you everything you need for your adventures. All the HAPs you need, essential workbenches, plenty crew size, while of course, if you get rid of your armory, replace it with something else, you can crank this up even higher. I don't think many people are going to focus on crew size in the first place. You can even improve this with your skills. Ladies and gentlemen, that is everything you need to know to build your own O4 Vengeance. If you found this video helpful, please do leave a like as I spent a lot of time on this build, easily 20 to 30 hours and a ton of credits. Share your thoughts about it in the comments down below. I would love to hear what you think of this design. And yeah, if you think I should make more spaceship builds, let me know in the comments down below as well. Guys, again, a big thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you want to stay in the loop with future videos. I already have plenty of guides and gameplay on the channel. Right now, though, it is 4am out. Good luck with the build. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Peace.